Ladies and gentlemen, today we have an experiment. Today we are going to another dimension. That is the dimension of stupidity. So we're putting a RTX 2080 graphics card and we're coupling that with a G4560, which is a Pentium. It's a dual core. Admittedly, it does have four threads, but since we just got off the back of testing this graphics card with the higher end CPUs, it's now time to pair it with this to see how much of a difference it really makes and if we can actually bottleneck this graphics card right here. Or perhaps we might just be a little bit surprised. Maybe the little Pentium can handle this card. And don't worry, I'm not gonna use this card with a VS350. Are you sick and tired of remembering that you forgot your passwords? Well, if you are, then today's video sponsor, LastPass, has you covered. A popular add-on that's free to use on popular browsers like Chrome, Opera, Safari, Edge, and Firefox. And the best thing is, it can auto-generate sophisticated passwords and never forget them. It has secure cloud-based protection, which means that you only have to remember your username for your LastPass account, and then it can remember every single password, especially those sites that you don't frequent much, and they require you to have a capital letter and two smaller case letters, and then followed by two numbers, three symbols, and then another number on top of that. I mean, those passwords do me in, but the thing is, in 2018, we do live in a day and age that requires better passwords than your simple ABC123, which hackers can easily gain advantage of. So LastPass can either auto-generate these or you can enter them in and it will never forget on your behalf. So it's finally time to gain one up on your memory. Links in description below. And we've got some interesting results to say the least. The dual core four threaded CPU, it actually surprised me. It didn't do too bad at all. Now we tested at 1440p to start off with and I thought it got so close to getting the numbers that were close to that of in the GTX 2080 review. And for that review, we actually changed between an 8700K and also a 7820X. And these are six and eight core CPUs that are both overclockable, and I did overclock both of them. But this time around, we're even making things worse for this little Pentium, where we've got single channel memory. I've got an eight gigabyte stick and a four gigabyte stick. So we've got 12 gigabytes of RAM, and as we said before, this was used for the scum budget PC, so saving money was the number one priority. But it really shocked me that, uh, for instance, we'll pull up the Final Fantasy 15 demo with DLSS enabled. We virtually scored no difference in the total score with overclocking versus non-overclocking versus the original 2080 review. Uh, moving over to Far Cry 5, however, we did see some differences here uh, to the point where overclocking did actually become a little detriment to the final score, which in this particular game, it does mean that certain intervals we are bottlenecking and that bottlenecking is actually being a detriment to performance. Now, keep in mind going in from here, I will say there's a big difference between choking and bottlenecking. Uh, choking essentially is where the computer will just start stuttering big time. And I've actually found that that's more to do with memory limitations itself. So when the memory speeds are too low or you simply don't have enough system memory available, that's DDR3 or DDR4, then that's when you will occur the phenomenon known as choking. Uh, though stuttering it was evident in some of these benchmarks, of course, moving on to PUBG was a perfect example where the 1% and 0.1% lows really showcased this and the weaknesses of the G4560, uh, where we did score the same frame rates, both non-overclocked and overclocked, and also frame rates that were lower than that of the 8700K in the original review. Uh, so the 0.1% lows in particular were a lot lower, and you could notice stuttering as you were playing this game. It was visibly noticeable, not just to my eye, but also the camera. I'm sure picked it up when I was recording. So our little G4560 is not doing a bad job, but at the same time, it's not desirable either, coupled with an RTX 2080. Moving over to Scum, however, again, 1440p ultra wide, the results really shocked me. Uh, this was playing this game really well, 
and it was playing it so well to the point where I couldn't notice a difference between this and uh, the original benchmarks that I did on the 2080. So it is only 40 FPS on the original benchmarks. I did have to pull up a different scene and I couldn't actually find the part of the map where I was benchmarking originally on because it's just such a massive map and I actually really haven't played the game that much besides just benchmarking it. And uh, this game played it pretty well. I mean, when there was these new areas loading up, then it did stutter massively. But after the areas loaded up, it really did a great job of playing on that particular field uh, with no real obvious stuttering. However, the FPS is lower than desirable, but it's still a decent experience with the little Pentium. However, moving on to Destiny 2, it was uh, capped again. This time the overclocking made a slight detriment to performance. So the bottlenecking here is reaching that limit where it's starting to now adversely affect performance. They're going back to World of Warcraft and I'm honestly thinking I'm going to be using this game a lot more in benchmarks because you guys are not only requesting it, you're also loving it as well. People were like messaging me after the uh, 2080 review going, thank you so much for including World of Warcraft benchmarks. And here we have an interesting result. This is probably the most interesting of all the results we got here today, where the G4560 was actually doing better than when it was in the original review. I may have missed a setting here, which I do believe happened because I went back and double checked everything and I'm like, that can't be right. It was doing a little bit better beating out the 7820X when I tested that in the original review. And I was kind of left scratching my head because this was a real weird result. I mean, I went back and double checked the settings and they were all the same. And I'm thinking, wow, okay, World of Warcraft really mustn't have come that far in the last uh, 14 years since it was released. Uh, but optimization again, as I said in the original review, DX12, makes absolutely no difference to this game and then uh, scaling it up to 2880p which was a ridiculous benchmark uh, saw the frame rates pretty much drop out to the same levels because the graphics card is then being stressed at 100 uh, percent but nonetheless uh, world of warcraft looks like it loves indeed that single core high ipc performance so i guess if you've got like a four core 7700k and you're overclocking that thing to five gigahertz and that's probably going to be one of the best in slot CPUs for that game. Though Nvidia's own ray tracing demo saw absolutely no difference. Uh, keep in mind, I'm just eyeballing this thing, but it was again consistently capped to 24 FPS. And then moving on to the last benchmark, Crisis 3. I'm actually going to be using this benchmark, just like World of Warcraft, in a lot more videos because it still is in 2018 such a good game for testing. Here, are the G4560. Uh, was actually doing really bad. This was probably one of the worst results, just like PUBG, in these benchmarks. And this is where it was stuttering, and it was actually noticeable stuttering, but also the total performance was lower than that of the original review. So we were scoring 56 FPS uh, at normal clock speeds with the 2080, but then when we overclocked the 2080, it dropped down to 51. So the bottlenecking was becoming more apparent here, and it was probably actually the worst result when we overclocked. So that's really about it when it comes to the little Pentium, but it was really funny to see that a lot of these titles, the CPU utilization and the GPU utilization was lining up near perfectly. Though I will add on top of that, we didn't really take it to 4K because I didn't really see the need. The results would have actually been probably more in favor of the G4560 scoring closer to that of the 8700K and the 5820X. Uh, because we are testing at ultra settings and the purpose of that 2080 review, was to really extract the most difference out of the graphics cards themselves and not the CPUs. Uh, but keep in mind, if you are getting a G4560, do not couple it with a 2080, because again, I did test these games at ultra settings. Me, usually as a gamer, I play at either medium or high settings, more in particular high settings, because I find that's the best sweet spot for getting the visual fidelity and also the high frame rates. I actually never play games at ultra personally. I'm just doing that to stress graphics cards and expose differences between the cards and make sure the CPU doesn't become a bottleneck in that particular review. But G4560, it actually surprised me. It did hold up at 1440p ultra wide with the two other CPUs. But when it comes to getting that better experience, this is where the G4560 really falls flat in my opinion. You can see the stuttering was uh, there, it was inconsistent in the results. And so I guess when you're going past a mid-range graphics card, like a GTX 1060 or a RX 580, for example, then you'd really want something better than the G4560. Not to mention that when you take it down resolutions and you drop the settings down to high, 
the GTX 1060 and also the RX 580 will then be requesting more frames from the CPU itself. And then of course, you'll end up with the same conclusion we've had here today. But when it comes down to it, the dual core can get up and boogie in 2018. And it really was surprising to see this CPU actually do a little bit better than I expected. I didn't expect it to actually hold up the graphics card at 100%, considering this is the latest and greatest RTX 2080. Oh my God, you beaut graphics card. Uh, dual core did okay, surprisingly. Shocking. But anyway, that's about it for the little G4560. Dual core 2018, you definitely want the four threaded option, not the actual two cores, two threads. You might really come into some issues then, uh, but still does okay, especially for easy to play games or popular multiplayer titles. I think World of Warcraft did uh, show just that. But let me know guys in the comment section below, are you still running a dual core CPU? If so, let me know which. If not, when did you get off a dual core CPU? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, and I'll catch you in the next tech video very soon. Also, big thanks to today's video sponsor, LastPass. I'll put the link in the description below if you want to never forget those forgetful passwords again. Peace out for now. Bye. And there we go. No one ever knew this abomination of an experiment happened.